Hello everyone. Welcome to Automation E2E. In part 1 of this series, we have covered how to handle dropdown using Selenium Select class for dropdowns implemented using standard select tag. Now, in part 2, we are taking things to the next level by exploring custom styled static dropdown which are widely used on modern websites. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of how to handle these dropdowns and interact with their options effectively. So, let's get started. Custom style static dropdowns are created using HTML elements like div, span, ul, and li instead of the traditional select tag. They are styled with CSS to look stylish and interactive, mimicking the behavior of standard dropdown but with a more modern and customized appearance. To handle these in Selenium, we can use click action to open the dropdown and select the desired option by interacting directly with the dropdown structure. You'll need to inspect the dropdown in the browser to identify the specific locator for the parent element and the option inside it. These dropdown require a little extra work but are very common on modern website. So understanding how to handle them is very essential. So let's go to amazon.com. Let's click on this option. In here, this particular element is a very good example of such dropdowns. To interact with such element, we have to first click on them. Once the list pop up, we have to click on whatever option we have to choose. The same thing we have to do in our automation. Let me show you how this dropdown is implemented in HTML. So let me inspect this and you can see this uses pan tag. And if I click on this and if I inspect any element here, you can see that all these elements are inside a div tag and inside that you have an ul tag and then we have a list tag. And inside the list again we have an anchor tag followed by other span tags which are here. As you can see, this span tag is the symbol. This is the currency code and this is the text. So in this way, this dropdown is implemented. Now, why we call it static is the element inside the dropdown, as you can see here, these are all static elements. These are not changing anywhere or we don't have any option to select or search here. So this is a very good example of customized dropdown, which is implemented without a select tag. So let's write a code to handle this. So the steps we have to follow is go to Amazon site, click on the option to navigate to that page. Then to interact with the dropdown, we have to perform these three steps. First is to click on the dropdown, then click on the option and then open it the selection. So let's start with the code by we'll take XPath and let's go to the site and inspect this element here. So this is the element, right click, copy XPath, let us paste the XPath here. So once we click on that element, we are here on this page and now we have to inspect this element. So let's copy the XPath for this as well. Scroll up, you can see one unique element is highlighted here. So we have added that XPath here to click on that currency selection. So once we click on this, so as you can see here, this div tag has dual tag, which has all the list of dropdowns options. Not all options are interactable. Like this one, you cannot click on this because this is for the select currency. Second one can be interactable. Third one, if you see, this is a line. So again, this cannot be selected. If even if I try to click on it, it's not selectable. And then we have this element. And similarly, we have other elements. So as you can see here, let's click on the euro currency. It has an ID here, so we can use the ID to click on it. So let me paste the ID here and we'll be clicking it using. Okay, we have to click here as well and here as well and here as well. And once we have selected it, let me let us print it out to see if our code worked. So this will be this same exact element again. So let me copy this and instead of click, let us do a get text. All right. These are the steps you would have to follow to interact with that element. So let's run this program and see how it behaves. So there you go. It has selected Euro here. And also you can see it has printed the Euro here. That is how you interact with such type of drop down. Now, as we saw in our last tutorial, select class had built in methods for getting all the options present inside the drop down, interacting with all of the options. If you want to do similar thing as this use case, we have to follow the following steps. So I have listed down the steps here. So the first step would be to find an X path, which will return all the options present in the drop down. So once we get the list of web element, we can then print the size of it just to see if we have got the correct elements. And then we can traverse through the list and interact with all of the elements. So we're back at the site. Let's inspect and find the X path for all these elements. 
so let's inspect this so let's copy the xpath for this parent here so this is the xpath for this parent and we have to traverse down so ladder backslash and then the next element is ul as you can see it has found the unique link and then we have li and as you can see it has found total of 69 elements but this also includes this line element which is not of our interest because that is not interactable so it's basically not returning all the options that we want so let's go to next level which is the anchor tag so as you can see there are 68 of them which have the anchor tag out of which this one is select currency so we cannot interact with this either so to exclude this let's go one level deeper on the tags that we can interact with which has a span so the next tag is span tag as you can see now all the elements that are highlighted are this particular element and these are the options that are present in this drop down so so this particular xpath will act as the get option method that is present in the select class so let's go back to the code and let's do a driver dot find element by the x path and let's paste the x path here we have to do find elements here because we are going to find multiple elements here and let's store it in a list of web element let's name it as options is equal to let's import the list here so basically here we are going to get all the list and as we saw there are a total of 67 options there so let's print it out number of options is option start size and once we get we print out the size we'll write a for loop here to traverse to the list and interact with all the elements i've already explained this in previous tutorial of find elements where we have seen how to use find elements method i'll link that in the i card and you can have a look at that so let me write int i is equal to zero i is less than options dot size i plus plus all right so first we have to click on the drop down so i'll copy paste this code from here and then we have to click on this web element from these options so for that we'll write options start get and let me give it as i dot select and let's print out what has been selected for that let's copy paste this selection code we have already written here okay so we have written code here so this for loop will help us traverse through the list and interact with all the elements so let's run this program and see how it works just launch so as you can see it is selecting all the elements one by one and it is printing it out here so as you saw, it has interacted with all the elements that are present inside the drop down. And also you can see it has stored the number of elements present inside the drop down are 67 as we saw earlier. And then after it has printed all the elements that it has selected. So in this way, you can perform all the actions that we performed using select class. So this is the way you handle drop downs which are not implemented using select tag. To sum up, handling drop down beyond the select tag involves understanding their structure and using flexible locators like XPath. Modern websites often use custom style dropdowns, but with the right technique, they are all manageable. In the next tutorial, we'll see another common variant of dropdown, which is auto selection dropdown. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you so much for watching.